making anyone out on the island wake up at 6.30. <coughs> okay, guys. Well, I'm going to get things rolling. I am really hopeful that our internet connection stays well for us, so um, bear with me. Um, I have written a, a bit of an outline because I want to ensure that I'm not missing any points that I really want to um, bring across for any of you that are currently looking at your marketing and communications and wondering what you what you should be doing during COVID-19. Um, some of you perhaps had a plan prior and now it's you're, you're just at a bit of a loss of where you should go. For some of the others, it may have just been something where you started your business and you just started talking about it the way you thought you should, and now you're dialing back going, okay, well, maybe I need to build out a bit of a marketing plan because now, you know, I'm not able to do what I typically would do in our business, and so now we're going to pivot a bit in our marketing efforts. Um, the first thing, though, that I must say is I want to thank all of the individuals that are a part of this group. Uh, when we first started the group, we knew there was going to be a need. We didn't know exactly what the need was going to be, so we were prepared to um, do what we were doing in our businesses as well and just let it organically happen during COVID. Uh, we decided as a group that focusing on education was going to be a key aspect of our group. But the other thing that we wanted to provide was just a bit of a support network for businesses where you found the ability to engage with one another. Um, also creating the mentorship program last week was a big thing that we started to recognize. There were a number of business owners that perhaps could find value in connecting with someone else uh, that had some expertise in areas that they were searching for. So that mentorship program has been added and you can find that on the left um, left hand side of your screen when you're in the group that it'll show that to you. So we encourage you to either reach out to someone to be your mentor during this time or if you are comfortable being a mentor, you can sign up right in the mentorship area and just put your area of expertise because I truly, truly believe that for our community to thrive right now, we need to recognize that we are all in this together, like hands down. So I just really encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, but when I started the group, there was zero intention of Deanna doing a live. I'll repeat, there was zero intention of me ever doing a live. I was quite happy um, telling everyone else why they needed to do a live uh, because I knew that their voices were needed. I knew they were experts in their industry. I knew that they would bring to the group exactly what we needed, um, a positive message. Uh, they would be informative. Um, but I didn't have to do anything with this other than work behind the scenes with our team. And then we did a poll and the poll said that many people in this group wanted advice on marketing and communications. All right. Who's doing that live? Oh, me. Oh, you want me to do that live. Awesome. Um, that was not the information I wanted to hear because uh, quite honestly, I don't like doing lives. Um, lives are scary. Uh, I would rather stand on a stage in front of 500 people and speak than have to do a live right now. Uh, so then I had to ask myself, why is that? And, and I know why that is. And it's important for me to talk about it today because I know that so many of you likely have the same thought about being on video, about being in live, about even putting your face out in your marketing efforts. And it's because there is this thing called imposter syndrome. 
and imposter syndrome is very real. And it is when one doubts your accomplishments and you um, have a persistent internalized fear of coming across as a fraud or an imposter. And I had this realization when I was down at Social Media Marketing World in March because there were two individuals on stage at two different times. They were keynotes. One was Michael Seltzer, who I read his blog daily. I follow him on social media. I look to him for information on what's happening in regards to our industry. He is an expert, hands down. He's amazing. And then another woman who I heard for the first time there named Jasmine Starr, who was also fabulous at getting her message across. And I listen to her podcast now and I follow her on social media. And both of them during their keynotes talked about being an imposter, talked about feeling like they could be considered an imposter and they suffered from imposter syndrome as well. And so that provided me the insight to know that I'm not alone in feeling that way, but I also know many of you may feel that way too. And so we're gonna talk about that today um, when we get into the discussion, because the matter of fact is you do know your stuff. You know it. You know your industry, you know your clients, you know what their needs are and you know how you can help them. And you likely have years of experience doing what you're doing without even really thinking about it because you're entrepreneurs. And as entrepreneurs, we see an opportunity. We learn as much as we possibly can about that opportunity and we dig deep we dig deep and right now that's what i need you to do is i need you to dig deep and recognize that you've got this this isn't something that we anticipated um, but i believe that every challenge that we're faced with provides us a gift and uh and and there's someone on this call that made me realize that and those gifts are unbelievable when we learn to accept them. So your track record should speak for itself. How long have you been doing what you're doing? What do your customers say about you? What accolades have you received over the years in your business? My dear, you are not an imposter. You are an expert and you have got this. So don't be afraid to be who you are and communicate to your customers in the way that they want to hear from you. Okay, so I was being a little bit vulnerable talking about imposter and admitting the fact that I myself can suffer from that. Um, but I think that was a message that was necessary. And, uh, and for any of you that have felt that, then I hope you heard what I was saying. Um, because we need to talk about where we start now and how can we ensure that what you do today is going to provide you a return on investment tomorrow. Maybe not exactly tomorrow, but you know, in, in soon. Because let's not forget that, again, fundamentally as business owners, we are always looking to maximize our return. And that's important. So COVID or not, the fundamental principles behind marketing and communications have not changed. We need to know what our story is. We need to know who our Doris is, and I'll get to Doris here soon. And we need to understand what makes us the best damn banana bread. And Les, I will give you credit for that one, so just stay tuned. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I talk a lot about being a storyteller. Um, I, I am an extrovert with a bit of an introverted personality at times, but I feed off of sharing stories. 
Um, my, my friends and family can, can attribute to that. Uh, they're probably sick of some of the stories because I also have an awful memory. So I forget what stories I've told sometimes. Um, but I love stories and it's because stories connect us. And during my client consults, I like to let prospective talk, uh, prospective clients talk about their story, um, talk about their business in a one-on-one -on -one so that I get a better idea of who they are. Uh, I'll ask questions like, um, what's their value system? Um, and I don't necessarily say, what's your value system? I, I ask questions that provide me an understanding of what their value system is. Um, why do they do what they do? What made them start their business? What is it about going to their business that they love every single day? And these questions give me a really good sense of what their story is and what's crucial in building their brand or in building out their communication strategy. Because at the end of the day, I do not, I repeat, I do not believe in cookie cutter marketing. It is not what's going to provide you the greatest value in the long run. I believe in authentic communications, in authentic brands. And so that means I need to understand their story. So one of my homework tasks for all of you, because our kids are in school right now and I'm making you go to school too, uh, and now we just may have seen a lot of people drop off the call, but hopefully not is I want to work with you on helping you understand your story. So to help, as any good teacher would do, I have written out an example of what I think tag story is, how I perceive my story, so that it helps you understand how to write your own story. So here goes my example. I'm going to read this. Tag started as a goal to help business owners bring all their marketing efforts together so that there is no fragmentation in what they do, but instead it all ties together. My business will focus on relationships that have full trust because without trust, we can't work our magic. When bringing new team members in, I want individuals that lead with similar values that I have. They not only have to be excellent at what they do, I want them to believe in hard work, in kindness, and in family. And at no time does one become stronger than the other, but okay, we have to ensure there is balance. Our principles will come from the book Big Magic and they're non-negotiable because I understand what happens if they're not present. The principles include courage, enchantment, permission, persistence, and trust. In all of our communications with one another and our clients, those principles must stay in mind. Our clients will appreciate new ideas and being competitive in the marketplace. I am a bit of a competitive person. They will appreciate that we won't give them what they want, but we will give them what they need. And our clients will think of TAG as a long-term partnership, not a short-term relationship. TAG will not be something for everyone, but instead the right thing for some. So in that story, if any of you follow Tag on social media, or if any of you meet some of my amazing team members who quite honestly are what makes Tag great, if you see that, you will hear some of the things that are in my story communicated in what we do because it's what I believe in and it's what my team believes in. So I outlined what we do, who we want to work with, what I, how I want to work with and take, what our values are, and I affirmed that I'm not looking for a short-term relationship. I'm not on Tinder here. This is long-term. I'm looking for that true partnership where it's a long-term marriage. So I share this with you because I want you to understand how easy it is to write your story. You know, they talk about journaling and, and how much um, release journaling can be for oneself. I want you to journal right now about your business. 
don't don't get too concerned about building a business strategy because sometimes when we just write down what we do who we are that strategy just starts to come out so your homework this week is to write your story the next step is to learn who your doris is so again this comes a bit from social media marketing world this was from 2019 and i was in a session and it was about newsletters and there was this uh woman there her name was ann hanley and i wrote this quote down from ann because it just hit me hard because it was what we do but sometimes i need that affirmation from someone else to tell me that yeah it's right and it said even when you are marketing to your entire audience or customer base you are still simply speaking to a single human being at any time how true is that even in today's world of uncertainty where there are days that i don't know if what we're doing today is actually going to be the best strategy for tomorrow i'm still just speaking to one human being and so that brings me to doris Doris is, well, there's a lot of Dorises. I have an anti Doris too, but the Doris I'm talking about is to start with is Warren Buffett's sister. So I know if I was in a room full of people right now, I'd say by the show of hands, please tell me how many of you know Warren Buffett and think that he's probably a bit of an expert in his industry. So did his sister, Doris. Um, and for my research about Doris, she and Warren have a very close relationship um, and she has done extremely well uh, from the help of her brother and uh, and Doris is a philan uh, philanthropic individual and her goal is to give away all of her worth when she passes away. Uh, but the one thing about Doris is she doesn't really understand how Warren does what he does. She just benefits from it and, and has a general understanding of what he does. And there are books written about Warren Buffett's letters to his shareholders. If you go on Amazon, you're going to see them. And the reason these books are so famous is because he decided when he would write his letters to his shareholders all across the world, he would write those letters as if he was writing to Doris. He would provide kindness. He would provide insight in a way that she could understand. He would insert some humor in those letters. Um, he knew exactly who he was writing to when he wrote those letters because he knew who Doris was. And so my question is, who's your Doris? Who's that target market? That's the term that marketers like to use, the target market that you're trying to connect with. And so I have to take this one step further because it's great to know who our Doris is, but at the same time, we need to know who that voice is in our head is that is our saboteur. And so I have to give credit where credit is due. And I didn't come up with this idea of my saboteur. Uh, one of my mentors, Frances Barnes did, but she introduced me to the idea that those voices in our head that like to wreak havoc, quite honestly, on a lot of our thought process, those are saboteurs that are typically, if you really think about it, they have names. I know exactly who's talking to me at certain times. And the reason it's important to recognize who the saboteurs are is sometimes they prevent us from talking to Doris. So think about this. How many times have you created a post for social media, perhaps a video, and then went, no, I can't share that. What is he going to think? What is she going to say? Right? The saboteurs prevent us from talking to Doris. How bloody awful is that, that we let someone else prevent us from talking to our target market because we're afraid of what they might think. And so I'm going to tell you right now, for every one saboteur, you likely have at least 25 people that want to hear your message. 
that want to hear from you about what you do and, and how you do it because you are an expert and you've got this, you do. So I want you to speak to your doors and I want you to shut those saboteurs up. Tell them to take a hike. They do not belong there ever, but right now, especially when we are dealing with so much with COVID, they definitely do not deserve any of your headspace. So the next homework item that I have for you is to determine who your Doris is. Who is that ideal client for you? Who do you want to see as ambassadors in your community with your brand? Who do you want to have engaged with you on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever it is? Who are those people? What do they enjoy doing? Where do they enjoy going? Think about who your Doris is. Picture that person, not just the standard way that even marketers can be guilty for, even my team can be guilty for, I am guilty for it. But if we really take the time to drill down who that person is, it makes a world of difference in how we market to people and communicate. So I wrote down a great example of this. It's hard to target a message to a generic 35-year-old middle-class working mother of two. It's much easier to target a message to Jennifer, who has two children under four. She works as a paralegal and is always looking for quick but healthy dinners and ways to spend more time with her kids and less time on homework. So that perhaps is a description of a Doris for a company like Nourish. Um, we go into detail about how a company is helping connect to that person, what their pain points are. That's a Doris, okay? So figure out who your Doris is and write that down. And then the last point that I am going to give to you for homework is what makes you the best damn banana bread out there? So I know that Les is on this call and I'm ignoring any comments that may be showing on the side because I don't know what he might be saying. He's already told me I should brush my hair. Thank you, Les. I was going to say some really nice things about you, about you being a fabulous mentor to me and about my week in Vancouver, uh, on Vancouver Island with you and Don and how much you helped me and how you are the person that introduced me to the term best damn banana bread. Um, and I guess I will continue to say that. Uh, also, just if everyone wants to put a little birthday message, I understand that Les is one year older, which makes him old, old now. Um, so happy birthday, Les. Okay, so the best damn banana bread. Um, Les told me this story, and so I'm gonna botch it because I already mentioned I have a, a bad memory, but um, I'm gonna tell my version of what I think happened in this story and how I want you to get to the point of, of using this term too. Uh, Les and Dawn were on a family vacation in Hawaii, and I'm sure there was lots of time spent on the beach and uh, probably enjoying a few Mai Tais and good Hawaiian beer. And they were on the way home, um, back to the vacation home, sorry, on the road. And all of a sudden, there's this big billboard in front of them. And it says, best damn banana bread, with an arrow pointing one way or the other, directing them to where to go. Well, Les being the individual he is, always up for an adventure, but also one that enjoys his sweets, says, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to go see if this is the best damn banana bread around. And off he goes and, uh, and meets the business owner and, and enjoys a snack. And that then became a realization of how that company was able to provide a value proposition right in their marketing that enticed the person to say, yeah, I, I want that. I need that. And so from a marketer's perspective, we need to think about what makes you the best damn whatever it is, and we need to highlight that. So how does your messaging, how is what you're communicating helping you share this with your clients? The thing is, this doesn't have to be difficult. Quite honestly, it can be quite simple, but it has to be memorable and 
hands down, it has to be the truth. If you are not making your value proposition something that you can deliver on, then there's no point in even communicating that because you are going to have a much larger problem on your hands. So I want you to understand what your story is. I want you to think about who your Doris is. And I want you to communicate what makes you the best damn whatever it is around. Now, this, this part is where it gets to be hard. Thinking about once you know all those things, where do you start sharing your message? How do you start sharing your message? And, and it's the part that makes it difficult for me because I don't believe in a one size fits all marketing strategy. Um, no different than Tracy Newlatt wouldn't believe in a one size fits all financial plan. And Luke wouldn't believe that every person is going to have the exact same needs from a lawyer's perspective. And so it's difficult for me to tell you exactly what you need to do once you figure all of that out. Because I don't believe in a one size fits all. But what I decided to do was think about some tips that can help you so that as you start determining a what your budgets can allow for if you have no revenue coming in right now then you may be you may be more hesitant to put some expenditures out there related to your marketing efforts but that doesn't mean that you don't have the opportunity to do some things that would be perceived free um, although it's going to be your time invested in them so we need to determine you know, what each person themselves can do as a business, but I'm gonna provide some tips to think about. And, and then at the end, I'll share some ideas on um, what we can do go, going forward once we understand what your story is, who your Doris is, what makes you the best down banana bread to ensure you're in the right spots. So let's start with the tips. Um, number one, you need to be you. Your business needs to reflect who you are. And so, and, and quite honestly, like we've talked about authenticity for so long and, and lots of marketers do. It's, it's a buzzword perhaps to some, but it's, it's the truth. And it's why for me, when people say, oh, Facebook is changing and the algorithm, it, you know, no, no, it doesn't matter. Because if you are really good at what you're doing, and you are being authentic on your feed, algorithm or not, people are going to want to engage with you. So you need to be you. Number two, we can't prevent or we can't pretend that COVID isn't happening right now. COVID is here, COVID is happening. So we can't pretend it's not, but we need to recognize that it's changing things. And so people are starting to dial back from news because there's an abundance of it and it's difficult and, and quite honestly overwhelming to constantly be hearing about it. So that means a lot of people are getting turned off of being sold to even. Um, in that first week when this happened, I think I unsubscribed from about 65 different emails just because well, A, maybe it was something I could control right in that moment and I was feeling like I was out of control on everything. But B, I was upset because I didn't wanna be sold to. So when I think about what people are looking for today, it's, it's not really that it's changed that much from before, but I'm encouraging people to look at ways to provide support, to show your expertise by providing education and guidance. And, and then that all goes back to being you and recognizing that you are the expert. And so share that, help people recognize who you are and why when this is all said and done, they should come and work with you. So don't pretend that it's not happening. Some of the things that I'm seeing and how people are shifting what they're doing is um, hairdressers. I'm noticing that there are some salons out there that are providing tutorials. This is a value not only for the stylist who 
is a creative person and currently feels at a loss because they don't get to do their usual um, creativeness on someone's hair. The, the other aspect of it is it's just helping them stay present and connect with their clients who they are missing tremendously. Another thing that I'm seeing is a lot of our gyms providing the at-home workouts for their membership. Um, I'm a member at Collective, and for me, seeing that they have those lives and that I can join it, I sure, I can go find another app and go on there, but I don't feel engaged the same way as I do if Aaron is sitting in front of me yelling at me, telling me to work harder. If Sabrina is saying, get your ass in gear. That is authentic and that is what I'm used to. So it's giving me comfort. So let's not ignore the fact that COVID is here right now and we just need to recognize what our followers, if it's on social media or even quite honestly, any of the traditional media that we do is authentic, authentic to us. Um, don't try and be everything to everybody um, because that never works anyway. So again, that goes to understanding who our Doris is, but it also goes into you know the platforms that you're using. Often what I'll tell clients that are coming to us for the first time wondering what they should be on, if they're going to manage it themselves, I remind them to do it in bite-sized pieces because, you know, things change constantly on social media. So it gets really hard to understand what you should be doing and how to do it really well. And I want you to do this really well. So get to learn that one platform and be fantastic at it before you start dabbling in something else, because it will show and you will reap more return by doing that. Um, don't post for the sake of posting. So if there's any of my clients on here or if any of my team is here right now, they're probably all nodding their head and saying, she says that all the time, but it's true. Do not post for the sake of posting. Not only will it screw with the algorithm that I mentioned earlier, and so there's a reason for that, but half the time when we're posting just for the sake of posting, it's because we feel like if we're not present, then people will miss us. Well, that's not true. It's also not true that selling to someone 100% of the time is going to build you a giant customer base. There's this thing called the 80-20 rule. You can Google it, you're gonna see it. It'll talk about social media. 80% of the time, we should be talking about those things that I mentioned earlier, how to be authentic to yourself, how to provide education to clients, how to um, gain more insight in who those clients are. Those are the things that are important 80% of the time. 20% of the time, you can sell. That doesn't mean that 80% of the time when you are sharing that message, you don't have the intent of selling. Obviously, as business owners, we always want to try and sell our services if we're marketing to someone, but we shouldn't be selling all the time. The best analogy for that, think of the cocktail parties where there is an individual who walks in the room and the only thing that person has in mind is to try and collect as many business cards from the people in there and, and sell them on their products. A room scatters when they see that individual come in. It happens. It's fun to watch in a way, but it's because it's not authentic. You, you don't want to get to know who I am or who my team is. You just want me to know who you are. That's it. And most of the time that tactic doesn't work. So don't post for the sake of posting and you will see engagement go up. And the final one that I have is, just recognize that typically anyone that invests in marketing during a downturn sees results. And so that one I struggled with even putting in here, even though I know it's true. And it's because I know not everyone can do that right now. And, and that's difficult for me. Um, 
but everyone could have the opportunity to do that on their social media where it's free, as long as you're doing it really well, investing really well. But the fact of the matter is, when we research all of the different recessions over the years that we've went through, the companies that have been invested in their marketing, whether it is traditional media, which serves a great purpose for us still, and, and right now they are doing so much, our media outlets locally are doing so much to try and help our business community. And I am so grateful for that. So, you know, thank you to all of those locations that are considered traditional media for all that you're doing. But also with digital, there is return. So determine how you can be present in your marketing efforts and invest in it so that when we are through this, you thrive, you are stronger for it. So the last thing that I wanna mention is, Deanna's representing TAG, and, and that's, that's fantastic, but I also recognize that there are so many marketers in our community, and so many of you that are on here are working with different marketers. So I'm sharing my message, but if some of them had the ability to do this live right now, I know they would be saying so many of the same things. So I want you to reach out to your marketer, to the person you trust that can help you through this, because we've been talking so much about connecting with your, your um, partners, your external partners of your business, which includes your accountants and your lawyers but I've talked about this so often on our social media feed that I believe marketing is also one of those stakeholders that need to be brought to the table. It is not a side of your desk type of job. It is a difficult thing in today's world when there are so many different aspects of marketing that we need to be aware of. So bring your marketers into discussions. Make them aware of where you stand right now as a business. What are you doing? What are your objectives? Let them help you figure out a communication strategy that will help you get through this. It is crucial to bring people in that have an outsider's perspective, that have different industry knowledge than you will be able to have because you have been focused on your business, on your product that you sell. And, and that has been extremely important for you un to understand that. But today, you need to pivot. And when you pivot, you need to make sure that you have the right partners in place to be able to help you with that. I also encourage you to share your homework with me or with your marketer. Um, I'm very happy right now to be able to do free consults for anyone that is looking for that, that, that needs that guidance. Um, I want us all to make it through COVID and be stronger together. So whether it's me or whether it's your other marketer, um, just share that information with them because there's going to be value. And then the other thing um, that I wanna mention is that we are working on some webinars with Sandra Milne that will go into some of the things that I've talked about today in a deeper level, but also we will go into the different social media platforms that are available to you and drill in deeper there too. Because like I said, I want you to do what you're doing really well. And sometimes that means we need to step away from something else to get really good in this lane. So I just talked a whole lot. And, uh, and we do have a little bit of time left. I don't know if there's any questions that you guys are wanting to ask. If there has been anything that has been dropping in the feed up to now, um, I've been ignoring the comments thus far because uh, otherwise I'll get distracted, but I will go and review them and, and answer any questions that might be in there. But if there is anything currently that you just want to ask, please drop it in the comment and I'll answer. Um, I thank you for being a part of this group. Um, it is as much of a support for myself as it is for you guys. Um, I, I want us to be stronger together. And that word, that term, like I, I was thinking about it this morning, it seems like such a blanketed term, like, oh, stronger together. But is there any other way of putting it? Like, I, I can't 
I can't get over the fact that all of us feel the same thing. Business owners, nonprofits, bureaucrats are essential services that are just making sure that they do everything they can to keep us alive. Teachers, kids, no matter who I'm talking to, if I say we're in this together, it's true, right? So I am so grateful to have a group with over 700 people that believe that we're in this together and we can, we can help one another if we just work together. So that's it. Um, I thank you again. I hope that I have provided some sort of value and that uh, and and given you some direction right now on what you can do to help start your marketing strategy during this time period. Um, be offer yourself grace as much as you're offering other people grace right now because things are changing almost daily. So I'm grateful that our clients are knowing that if Deanna or Christine or Rachel says something today, something could change tonight where tomorrow we have to pivot. We have to do something different. Um, so know that can happen for you. Know that what you decide to do today might have to change by Wednesday. And although it's frustrating, there, if anything, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, um, remember who your Doris is. Shut the saboteurs up because they are taking away from some of your authentic communications that are so important to share for people to understand who you are. And I look forward to seeing what makes you the best damn banana bread around. So thanks guys. I hope I helped you out today and I appreciate you being here. Take care.